Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. This week, I want to discuss green screen keying and shooting in log mode with your camera. Should you be doing this? And if so, what's the best way to deal with it to get a good key? Here in the Timeline Index, I'm going to locate and open a 10-bit log clip that I shot with a Blackmagic Cinema camera. And the question this video will answer is should you shoot log when you know you'll be keying a shot? And the quick answer from the testing we've done is no. There's no real benefit from shooting log to get a better key. Generally, you shoot log to get increased dynamic range, particularly in scenes that have a lot of extreme contrast between the highlights and the shadows. However, when you're shooting in a studio where you can control the lighting, you should be able to set the dynamic range perfectly well without the need for shooting log. But if you did shoot log, or you've been handed a log clip, here's what you can do. If we look at the scopes, we can see in the RGB waveform that there's not much separation between the green channel and the other two channels. And if we look right in the middle, where we need to remove the green, it's around 45 or so, versus red, which is sitting at about 30. So there's about a 10 or 15 IRE difference between them. If we look at a different clip that was not shot in log, we have a much larger spread between the channels, from around 20 or 30 to roughly 50 here. So the delta is 25 to 30 IRE difference versus the log clip. By the same token, if we look at the difference in saturation, the green screen is here on the vector scope for our non-log clip. And for the log shot, our green screen is much closer in saturation from the subject we want to separate from. Because there's less separation in both the saturation and luminance values, it's going to be harder to pull a key on a log shot that has not been graded. So if you're going to key a shot, what I recommend is that you should either apply a LUT to the shot or grade the shot before applying the key. If we go to the inspector for this clip and choose the extended view, from the metadata pop-up menu, we can see no camera LUT has been applied. Normally, a camera LUT will automatically be applied on import if Final Cut Pro recognizes the camera that the clip was shot with. For this video, I temporarily removed the LUT. Now we can apply it by clicking the menu and choosing one of the LUT options. We shot this footage using the Ursa Mini Camera, so I'll choose the Blackmagic Design Film 4K LUT. And by doing so, I've now established this shot back as it was originally captured. Now we have a good dynamic range with a better spread between the different color channels, and obviously the green is much more saturated. Now I should easily be able to key this shot. Now whether you choose to apply a LUT or to manually grade the shot is a creative decision. But just to show you how to quickly grade it manually, I'll remove the LUT, then I'll press Command-6 to switch to my color tools, and I'll add a correction. In this case, I'll choose the color board and do a quick grade in order to get in the ballpark of what I want the shot to look like. I'll expand the dynamic range, making sure I get good detail from the model's face. So by grading this manually, I've done something similar to applying a LUT. You can also apply a LUT and grade, but for this example, I'm only doing one. The key is to apply the LUT and or grade before applying the key. Now that I've applied a basic grade, I can go to the effects browser and apply my key. You can see that the shot keys very quickly and very cleanly. Some of you have been wondering where Mark Spencer went. Well, he's around, he's just been working diligently on our advanced color grading tutorial for DaVinci Resolve 15, which by the way, we just released today. It's six hours of color grading awesomeness. You'll find the link below and the code. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week on MacBreak Studio.